Biggest window right now. We'll look at that forecast coming up. The snow is still coming down here in Estes Park as it has been all night long. I'm Matt Morrow coming up just how much this Rocky Mountain community received. I can't wait to see how much they got there in Estes Park. He'll check in with Matt. Seven o'clock live look over the Mile High City this morning as everyone's dealing with something. Obviously, it's going to depend on where you are and what you're seeing. Roads not horrible in downtown Denver, but as you get up to places like Commerce City and Boulder and Fort Collins, it gets worse and we are on it. We've got the biggest team of reporters all across Colorado covering this for you on this Sunday morning. Good to have you here, by the way. Good morning from my home to yours. I'm Kirk Yonke. I'm Megan O'Halloran joining you from the Fox 31 studios and let's get right to meteorologist Chris Domer tracking this storm yeah. system. It looks like we're really in the peak of it right now. I think so. Yeah, Megan, I, you know, it's just overnight. The wind direction was just all wrong around here. Now it's finally correcting itself. We're getting a little better upslope. So here's what I'm uh, watching between now and noon is the peak snow window. I think for us, the Denver area, the I-25 corridor, the foothills, and then it will taper off tonight into tomorrow morning. A lot of melting and compaction. If you haven't noticed, if it stops snowing at all, it's like the whole thing just compacts like a cake and then it starts to melt. Uh, the bullseye's definitely been up towards Fort Collins, up towards Horsetooth, Estes, that northwest foothill location. You've still got more snow on the way. We, we saw that report from Kevin Torres this morning. It's snowing like crazy up there. All right, so here's radar satellite. There's the storm. You can see the rotation. And overnight, we just got kind of slotted with that dry air and the bad wind direction. But now things have seemed to improve with an easterly wind piling in the moisture. See, around here, the wind direction is just everything. It determines your destiny. And with an east and or northeast wind, that will really help snow production around here. You can see it. The radar is full of blue, which is snow continues to pile in with that wind. So additional snow, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of additional snow on the way up and down the I-25 corridor. We've already got 11 inches out at the airport, officially measured out there, and another foot or two up there. And many of the, uh, the foothill locations, especially up here, Fort Collins West, Horsetooth up towards Estes, Cameron Pass, the Longs Peak Air uh, District. Another way to look at this is the timeline. The heaviest snow is between now and about noon, and then it will start to get lighter late tonight into tomorrow morning. Megan, Kirk, let's go back to you guys. All right, we'll check back in. Tomer, thanks for staying on top of that for us. Well, all new at 7, Estes Park expecting a whole lot of snow today. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely the highest totals that you've heard about were going to be Estes Park. So Matt Morrow is there. He's got the latest. Matt, how much snow have you all seen in Estes Park so far, and is it still falling out there? It is certainly still falling, Kurt. Good morning to you. But first, take a look at this. It is absolutely gorgeous here as the sun comes up here in Estes Park. I mean, this is what you live for in the Rocky Mountains in the wintertime. Just snow up here covering the trees, the sidewalks, the roads, and everything. If you're inside and you don't have to be outside, it is absolutely gorgeous. It started falling pretty heavily about, oh, say, 6, 7 o'clock last night. Has not let up. This is where a plow just came through. But take a look right here. This is all of the snow that has not been touched pretty much by anyone overnight. We're easily talking more than a foot, close to a foot and a half of snow in Estes Park. As you can tell, a lot more is on the way. People are out here shoveling. They had the plows out earlier, plows from the town are out, uh, CDOT, and also about 47 plows from Larimer County are out as well, trying to get these roads in a little bit better shape. They started to get bad last night. US 34, US 36, they were snow packed and icy. Pretty much so were every other road in town. The uh, Fall River entrance to Rocky Mountain National Park, just about five miles up US 34. That was closed yesterday. We expect it to be closed today as well because of all of this snow. Uh, if you're trying to get into the park, hopefully there are other entrances you can get to because it's just absolutely gorgeous. But you can bundle up and get out here. And again, the snow, we can't stress this enough. So much needed for this area after two historic wildfires just about uh, four and a half months ago that were on five miles either side of Estes Park here. So this snow, all of it, well more than a foot. We'll get out of measuring tape here in a few minutes, find out exactly how much there is, but it's certainly a welcome sight to people up here. And also no major problems either. Uh, no power outages uh, here in Estes Park and just besides the road conditions, but you know, they're used to that up here. Kirk, Megan. All right, uh, Matt, thank you so much for staying on top of that for us. Woo, it is really coming down behind you there. Uh, talk about the morning drive, too. It is really slick, really wherever you're waking up with us this morning.
Chris Prente in the pinpoint weather beast on this Sunday morning, Chris. I know you're kind of down in that C-470, Ken Carroll, Highlands Ranch area. Uh, are you all seeing snowfall down there right now? Uh, what's the current condition? I'll tell you, actually, speaking of current situation, let me give you a shot from the front of the Weather Beast as we head out here on I, uh, C470, and you will see what we call the conga line. Look to the left of your screen. A number of plows on C470 right now trying to clear the roadway. Now, you can notice, in addition to these plows that are doing their job, and these crews, by the way, have been working all weekend. We salute them. One two, three, four plows out. I should add, you'll also notice there's not a huge amount of snow falling right now along C-470. Uh, things have been pretty light throughout the morning, but as you look at the road, you can see not a whole lot of lane recognition. Uh, folks are going, we're going, uh, what is it, 25 miles an hour right now. We're taking our own sweet time. A look from the behind rear of the vehicle. You can see those plows making their way. They're heading west into the foothills. We're heading east. We're just by the Morrison exit here along C-470. I think the best piece of advice we've been saying all morning long, our entire crew from Channel 2 and Fox working on this Sunday so that you don't have to. My one piece of advice would be stay at home. Uh, it could be a lot worse but it certainly could be a whole lot better. And I'm pleased to say we haven't seen any spin outs, but mostly because, as you can see for yourself, there aren't a whole lot of cars on the road. So that is the good news. I would say the snow picked up maybe 30 minutes ago here on the southwest side of town, and now it's uh, gotten a little bit light again. As Chris Tomer said, it kind of comes in waves, and the wind picks up, then it dies down. So I'm sure we have not seen the last of it. And a quick a hat tip to my photographer. Uh, go ahead and wave to the folks at home, Anthony, keeping us safe on the road. We appreciate that in the Stevenson Pinpoint Weather Beast. I am just really amazed at all the technology here in the Beast. You know, my car is still a, you know, a manual transmission. Uh, it starts or not, depending on the day of the week. So I got all the bells and whistles in the Weather Beast, and we're going to do whatever it takes to keep you safe this morning, all morning long, here on Channel 2 and Fox 31. Guys, I'll send it back to you. Here's one last look at the roads along C-470 for you. All right, looking like things are okay, all things considered. Well, you are in the pinpoint weather bee, so I guess that makes it a little easier to navigate. Uh, Brende, thank you for the update there. <laughs> you know it, you know it. All right, 7.07 .07 right now, and we've been checking in with CDOT all morning long. We've got Bob Wilson back on the line. Uh, Bob, tell us where you are concentrating your efforts right now, where are your problem spots? Uh, you know, you just saw that the tandem operation we have there along C-470, so... That area along the foothills is definitely challenging, as they've been saying, lots of snow, more snow expected uh, more in the foot, foothill areas, and so we've got uh, operations concentrated there. But, you know, throughout the whole metro, I mean, this storm, as it continues to pick up, um, we've got crews throughout the whole metropolitan area and all along the front range uh, working hard. So it's one of those things, all hands are on deck, and uh, we're working the whole front range area with this storm. Well, and Bob, let me ask you, I mean, you guys plan for snowstorms all the time. It's what you guys do in the, in the winter. Is planning for something like this different than planning for a normal 45-inch snowstorm? Uh, well, I mean, it, just, it, it involves just getting more people involved um, because we have to sometimes move resources in from other areas of the state. Some other areas of the state um, are not getting impacted as much as we are. So it's a matter of um, basically moving the chess pieces around a little bit more so they're more concentrated in the areas where we're going to get hit the hardest. As you probably know, you know, most big snowstorms don't impact the entire state. Usually it's concentrated in certain areas of the state. So that when we're going to have a, a major storm like this, it's a major matter of moving our resources around to make sure we have the proper coverage. Well, Bob, how often are you able to get the – cloud drivers to make passes through the major thoroughfares and interstates. Are you guys making your rounds uh, pretty regularly there? Yes, yeah. And, and it, it, what really helps out is there's not a lot of people out on the roadways uh, on this Sunday morning. And so a lot of people also are heeding the advice to just stay at home. And so it allows us to uh, do the, the regular passages and do them more often because if, if, this, if we were dealing with like a Thursday morning rush hour, our plows are getting stuck yeah. in the same traffic that everybody else is. And so if we don't have that issue to deal with, it allows us to, to uh, hit the roads hard and, and, and treat them properly. And so it allows us to pass, pass through the areas more often.
Yeah, it definitely helps out when the roads are a lot more clear than they would be on a normal workday morning. Bob Wilson with CDOT, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you checking in with us, keeping us posted on what you guys are doing out there and the, the current situation out there. Man, looking at some of these shots, though, it is just, it is just a mess. And some of the worst hit spots uh, this morning, the reports we're getting are north of Denver. Fort mm -hmm. Collins certainly uh, seemed, to got, seemed, to, seemed to get the worst of it overnight. They got dumped on. Yeah, 3,000 customers without power right now as we speak. Let's get up to Kevin Torres. Oh, bless your heart. All bundled up for us. We do appreciate your efforts. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, and I got to represent the plants with a little plant mask here, but it might be a little bit too tough to talk. I got to tell you guys, though, we are dealing with a lot of snow this morning. So far, 12 to 14 inches have accumulated here in uh, northern Colorado, up in Fort Collins, and another nine inches expected throughout the day. But I want to show you this video because I shot this time lapse from my hotel room starting at midnight and ran it until five o'clock in the morning. Look at how much snow is weighing down the trees outside the hotel room there here in Fort Collins. Plus, as we were driving over here to our live location on Harmony Road in Timnath, well, we saw plenty of accidents. Lots of people out here uh, not heeding the warnings, not understanding how dangerous it is to drive in these conditions with these slick, slushy, and icy roadways. Uh, police have their hands busy today on accident alert today, obviously. Here in Fort Collins, uh, there are plenty of people without power, um, as was expected across the state with plenty of different communities. But as you can see, guys, uh, back out here live, if you take a look over here, you'll see, you know, these vehicles, like a minivan and I don't know, what is it, an SUV behind it, they're taking it super slow because in the middle there, there are giant chunks of snow and ice that was caused by the plows that have been coming through. They've been going through in waves of three, just pushing off all of that snow. Another interesting tidbit, by the way, north of here, our friends over in Cheyenne, Wyoming, just about 30 minutes north of Fort Collins. Well, at three o'clock this morning, snow was falling at a rate of one to two inches an hour, according to the National Weather Service. They had eight inches as of this morning, um, but they were expecting a lot more snow, and more snow obviously is still on the way. But here, take a look over here as this minivan attempts to get through these um, little bundles of snow that keep on popping up. Even the best hires have a difficult time getting through this sort of snow, this sort of snow that is so wet and heavy, guys. But we'll be here throughout the morning, throughout the day and night uh, to keep you covered up here in Fort Collins and northern Colorado and Larimer County, guys. Back to you. Man, just uh, getting covered up there, Kevin. Uh, we appreciate you keeping us posted. We'll check back in throughout the morning as that snow just continues to fall up north. 713 right now. And now we're going to go down south, Megan. Let's uh, come closer down to my neck of the woods. What do you think? All right. Let's check in with Nicole Fierro. She has a live update from... Castle Rock. Good morning, Nicole. How are you hanging out there? We're going to check in with Nicole after the break. Come on.
from Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. All right, live camera. Look at Blackhawk, Central City. That snow is just coming down in buckets up there. Isn't that awesome? How beautiful that is. And Lodge Casino up there. Really heavy snow on the foothills. And I just updated this list of totals. So DIA 11.1 officially. West Fort Collins 14. Wellington 14. Longmont 10. Genesee's up to 11. Greeley's up to 8. Downtown we're up to 6. Lakewood 7. Castle Rocks. They will be adding snow across the Palmer Divide. Your snow is coming a little bit later in the storm because of a different wind direction that's required down there. Eldora 11. Boulder 9. And Conifer now reporting in at 13 inches. So heavy snow now until the noon hour. And then pff, I would say it's going to get lighter as we head towards the evening hours, taper off overnight into tomorrow morning. A lot of melting and compaction. So really all night we just waited on the right wind direction. It was a, a southeast wind overnight. Now we have an east wind. That's what we need. East northeast would be optimal here and we have it. You can see the wind pushing the snow in. Our future radar keeps us in the deep blue here through nine and all the way into the noon hour. And then we start to see it back off a little bit towards the evening and then we'll taper off tonight into Monday morning to flurries a north. Look at the wind turn or back behind it that will start to flip the switch and dry things out around here. So additional snow. Another 6 to 12 on the way for Denver, all the way up by, up and down I-25, Loveland, Fort Collins. Another uh, foot to two, maybe a pocket of heavier up in the foothills. And you can see the additional snow west of the Continental Divide. Um, not much snow out over the far eastern plains. Maybe another 3 to 8 on the way for the spring. Zooming in on that map, you can see the additional snow. Anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of additional accumulation on the way. And the numbers down south will come later in the storm. Uh, as the wind turns more out of the north, northeast, then the numbers will start to pile up in that area. So over the next seven days, tomorrow becomes drier as the day wears on. Tuesday, Wednesday, small chances for snow showers. Much warmer beyond that, Megan and Kirk. Much warmer weekend by then. All right, thank you, Tomer. Let's check in with our live reporter spread out across the area for us. And we're going to go out live in Georgetown this morning as well. We'll be checking in with Kim Posey. Uh, in just a moment, but first let's get out to Nicole Fierro. She is joining us from Castle Rock. All right, it's dumping down there too, isn't it? It certainly is. What a difference a few hours can make. We came to this hotel at midnight. None of this was here and it's blowing in our face, coming down, continuing. So we got the yardstick out. Let's take a look at where we're at now. And I'm interested to tell you how that changes in a few hours because it is still coming down strong, hitting us in the face. All right, Dan, let's take a look. We got the yardstick out here. Let's see if I don't blow away. Looking about four and a half inches here right now in Castle Rock. We're right off I-25 and as we were heading in last night, conditions were rough. We're watching cars slowly go by, which is a great sign. But with this wind blowing the snow in our face, visibility is certainly a factor this morning here in Castle Rock. Also, the wind chill right now is certainly feeling it. You can see me blowing away. It's blowing in my eyes right now. Um, I am a little tired, so I'm not that strong, but uh, I'm pretty tough and I'm blowing right now. Uh, amazing to see what the difference is. We could also shake this tree over here and, and show you. It's sticking on this tree right now. So good morning. And here's what we're looking at in Castle Rock right now. Interested to see the neighborhoods as well. <laughs> Gosh, it, it's the first shot I think that like we're it. seeing the wind really pick up. We haven't really been seeing that in our other we shots. We certainly are. We certainly are. I can tell you that um, we saw this from our hotel room when I checked the conditions this morning. I could see the wind blowing, but wow, can you feel it? Definitely don't want to head outside this morning if you don't have to and you live in this area. We also spoke with the, uh, the kind woman who gave us coffee this oh, morning. She said her neighborhood has not been plowed yet. And we're going to head over there and see what conditions are like in the neighborhoods to show, you know, people who may oh, live yeah. here who might want to be getting outside. Yeah, no neighborhoods are plowed yet for the most part. I can tell you that down here where I am in Castle Rock. But uh, and I've got my, my snowflake camera set up. I've got a little ruler set up in my backyard. And uh, so far, same deal here, about four or five inches, but uh, we have seen the same thing. I mean, it's just beginning to really kick up. The wind's starting to blow, and that snow is, there that it is. wet. 
pasty snow. There you go. There's my <laughs> snow steak camera. And uh, you can see drifting probably five, six inches. But uh, if the worst is yet to come, then we're going to be keeping an eye on that right. snow steak and see how much it piles up. All right. Still to come, our crew spread out across the metro area, giving you a live look no matter where you're waking up with us this morning. Out in Georgetown, we're going to be checking in with Kim Posey as we continue to watch the effects from this snowstorm. from Denver. This is Fox 31 News. We're on it. Welcome back, 724, and a live look in Lakewood. One of our producers, Jamie, he set up a, a snow steak camera there. We got about six inches in the Lakewood area. That's a uh, Star Wars Charlie Blackman bobblehead, in case you're wondering, uh, next to the snow steak. And we've got about an inch of snow and Charlie Blackman's head. <laughs> so just for perspective, if you will, and it looks like there, are, there is some uh, snow falling, light snow falling in Lakewood right now. All right, 724, let's go out to Georgetown, seeing quite a bit of snow falling on the ground out there as well. We've got Kim Posey, she's in Georgetown. Hi. Kim, looks like some of that big, fat, wet snow falling right now. Spring snow in Colorado, right, Kim? Oh my gosh, it's actually beautiful. You guys, those big flakes just lightly falling still here in Georgetown. It's been snowing all night long and it has really added up. Take a look at the tops of these vehicles here. I well over a foot on top of all of these vehicles here. I did measure here in the parking lot. Not very accurate, I'm sure, because of the drifts. But if you take a peek, this goes to about 14 inches right there 
there. So definitely a lot of snow. Now we are on the side of I-70. Of course, I-70 was shut down in both directions last night. It did open up about seven, eight hours ago, but it's still really quiet here. There are cars coming up. You can see they're moving along quite easily on the interstate there. They're going at a decent pace, actually. And um, it's been interesting, just the quiet that we have experienced here with I-70 shut down for much of the night last night. Now you can see the mountains there. I mean, it is a beautiful morning here. And all of this snow is actually bringing a lot of skiers to the area. We are standing at a hotel parking lot at the Microtel in Georgetown. And we talked to a couple of skiers and boarders this morning who are headed up already. I heard there might be a little snowstorm, so <laughs> that would go play in the snow at Loveland. What do you think when you look out and see all this snow? Oh, I've seen it many, many, many times. I'm getting old. Okay. I've seen bigger ones. Yeah. But it's good. So what are you looking forward to today? Powder all day long until we fall over. <laughs> <laughs> until they fall over. So you're going to have those dieharders out there already. That man was actually from Conifer. They just drove up. He said to cut the commute. Uh, so they just have a few miles to go to get up on the mountain. So definitely a lot of powder out there. The snow's still coming down. Some of the other places we've measured around the parking lot, a little more than a foot, um, and it is still coming down. So we'll keep you posted uh, with the road conditions and the snow accumulation throughout the morning. Back to you guys. Oh, they're going to need their snow scrapers. I mean, it just blows my mind looking at this cars behind you. Yeah. Well, I this know. is, and if you're looking so for powder, much. if you're yeah, looking for powder, Kim, I mean, and you're a skier, this is a powder day. This is about as epic as it gets, don't you think? Yeah, let me show you this uh, bobcat here clearing the snow in this parking lot. This oh, wow. person has quite the job this morning. <laughs> 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 I think it's going to be constant. But we're grateful for whoever is doing that because maybe we'll get oh, out yeah. of here at some point today. <laughs> thank you, Kim. And grateful um, for all the folks that are driving those plows on the roads today as well. Thank you for checking in. We'll check back in live for us from Georgetown right now. Flying in and out of Denver, a struggle for many out of Denver International. More than 1,000 flights canceled this weekend. We're going to talk with the folks at the airport coming up.
7.30 on this Pinpoint Weather Alert Day. Good morning. Happy Sunday. This is what you're waking up to here in the downtown metro area. Chris Tomer, we've got him in studio here, and he says another 6 to 12 inches of snow. So another foot of snow could fall until noon today. A whole lot to get to. Thanks for joining us here for our special coverage. I'm Megan O'Halloran. And I'm Kirk Yonke. We are on Fox 31. We're on Channel 2 this morning. We've got the teams of both morning shows, both news stations combined today because we've got the biggest team in Colorado covering this. Let's start with meteorologist Chris Tomer. All right, Chris, so you were saying this thing kind of moved slowly yeah. overnight, <laughs> maybe slower than anticipated. The snow really just starting to kick in for a lot of us over the past hour. Exactly. And you're a perfect example of that, Kirk, down in the Castle Rock area. Most of the night is like, what's going on? Well, now the wind is starting to turn and become more favorable. And so Castle Rock, a lot of areas that didn't get snow overnight are getting it now. And I'd say the heaviest window is between now and noon for most locations. We will add another 6 to 12 in a number of locations. Uh, by the time this is all said and done, they'll taper off late tonight into tomorrow morning. A lot of melting and compaction. If you get into a phase where it stops snowing, everything starts to compact and melt. But the bullseye so far has been up around Fort Collins, West Fort Collins, Longmont, Horsetooth, Estes, wrapping all the way down towards Blackhawk and also Georgetown this morning. Here's the low. It finally made it here. We've been waiting on this thing for, it feels like an eternity, but here it is. And all night, the wind was out of the southeast. That's a bad direction for Denver. It's that dry wind. Now we're getting it more east, and then later this morning, a northeast wind will really drive it home. So here is our radar this morning up close. Look at the east wind pile in the moisture. This is just classic. So you have different scenarios. In the Midwest, you can get a storm snow, but around here, we need a, a very specific wind direction to get heavy snow. We're finally getting it. It's finally starting to engage. The upslope wind is now just driving that snow into Denver and across the Front Range. And we're seeing an additional accumulations on the way of 6 to 12 inches for a lot of areas. We're working on that now. And then it may be late in the game where we see some of these numbers come up on the south side across the Palmer Divide. You really need more of a north northeast wind down there. So that's a little later in the storm, uh, but you can see potentially we add another foot or two even in the foothills. Uh, timeline view of this heaviest snow now till noon and then tonight it starts to taper off into Monday morning and you can see the additional accumulations on the way. Still a lot to look at with this storm. We've got reporters all over the place, Megan and Kirk. We sure do. Well, there's no question about that. Yep. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> 733 right now. Let's talk about the foothills, right? Because we know the foothills typically and this is no exception and get some of the highest snowfalls when it comes to these winter storms. Jessica LaBelle joining us live from Golden right now. Brutal out there, Jess. <laughs> yeah, I keep blocking my face from the wind. It's really blowing the snow right into my face here. Uh, but Chris was talking about that upslope flow. We are feeling that in full force here in Golden. Not only that, we have some gusty winds mixed in with that. So that is going to be a factor for visibility out here this morning. And in Golden, we've picked up about five to six, maybe even seven inches of snow already. And the roads are just terrible up this direction. We saw a layer of ice last night when it was wet and the pavement was a little bit warmer. Those temperatures dropped below freezing. And on top top of that a lot of snowfall. So certainly a lot of people staying off of the roadways. We're in a parking lot here and you can see how snow packed it is. We've actually had plows that continue to come through and push all of the snow to the side, but you can see the road is already covered. A plow actually just came through here just a little bit ago. So that shows you uh, just how high this snowfall rate is right now in Golden. It's that wet, heavy snowfall and those winds making that wind chill very cold out here this morning. Live in Golden, back into you guys in the studio. Yeah, look at it coming down there. Has it let up at all or has it been pretty consistent out there, Jess? Kirk, for the past several hours, it's been snowing pretty good. So this is really when we're going to yeah. start to stack up the totals. I know a lot of people looking out the window early this morning may be thinking, eh, it's not a ton of snow. We still have a long ways to go with this storm system, so keep that in mind. And you would not venture out into this if you didn't have to, right? Oh, that's right. You guys stay home if you can. The roads are absolutely terrible. Stay yeah. inside and safe and warm. Right. Done. We'll do it. Done. You heard right there <laughs> from meteorologist <laughs> Jessica LaBelle Jealous joining Kirk. us out in Golden. Thank you. We appreciate that. DIA, meantime, forced to reschedule. and Well, the airport didn't reschedule, but the airlines did. Hundreds of flights this weekend. We're joined by Alex Rotaria, the spokesperson for DIA. Uh, Alex, at last check, we're hearing 1,200 flights canceled. Is that number right? 
Yeah, so we're at 1,300 wow. as of yesterday wow. that were canceled and 38 delays. So, you know, a lot of the airlines, thankfully, have um, taken note on the forecast, and mo- the majority of our flights are canceled for the day. Uh, so, Alex, uh, I mean, you're talking really, really low activity today. How many flights are still, are still happening, and what should people do if they, if they have a flight scheduled today? So if folks have a flight scheduled today, it's most likely for later today. So please, before you head all the way out to the airport, check your flight status with your airlines. They'll know all the information about any delays or any cancellations. Are you all still fully operational out at DIA right now? Absolutely. You know, the airport's always open. You know, maybe our runways would be closed for some reason. Like, let's say there was a terrible, terrible snowstorm, but that never means that we're shutting our doors on our passengers. Um, So even, for example, right now, out of our six runways, four are still open. They're getting cleaned every 15, within 15 minutes, and we're we're ready to go once um, this weather clears up. Yeah, I know the official uh, snowfall total out there at the airport, I think, is at 11 or 12 inches. Last I I got an update on that. And I think, uh, Alex, a lot of people don't realize that you guys at the airport are in charge of keeping Pena clear as well. How is that going? That's right. So that's why we have so many pieces of equipment, over 200 pieces of snow equipment, because we do need to um, treat the the Pena Boulevard and our parking lots um, and make sure that passengers can drive in safely. Alex, uh, do you know how many flights are hanging in the balance right now? I know you mentioned uh, possibly later this afternoon you could get some flights out. I I just wonder uh, how many uh, flights and airlines we're talking about here. Yeah, so it's tough to know because it's all due to weather, but we do have flights scheduled to fly out of the airport later today. But you don't have any flights taking off right now, right? Correct. That's right. All right. Alex, thank you so much. Giving us that perspective from the Denver International Airport, certainly feeling the impacts from this uh, big winter storm that's uh, upon us right now. And we're watching it pile up. Uh, A lot of areas really just starting to see that heavy snowfall right now this morning. Hey, look. That's a lot of snow. Oh, it is. (laughs) Ashley Michaels, what a trooper you are. She's joining us live outside of DIA, uh, where we got an official measure of 11.1 inches of snow falling out where you are. Hey, Kirk and Megan. Yeah, I saw all my colleagues out in the snow, so I figured I needed to put on my uh, my hat, my gloves, and head out here as well. I apologize. I've got to shield my face. This wind is whipping out here, and when I take my uh, hand down, it kind of feels like little snowballs hitting me in the face because these flakes are huge. All right, I'm going to give you a live look behind us. It is a winter wonderland out here at DIA. Like you guys said, we got about a little more than 11 inches. Officially, I've taken my uh, my ruler around, and, you know, we're not showing 11 inches on any of our surfaces right now here I'll kind of give you a look and show you what we're seeing this is it's it's kind of kid stuff right here very very small amount of snow the thing is the crews here at Denver International Airport like you just heard from Alex they've been working around the clock we've been watching them since yesterday uh, really trying to clear every surface around here Even though they don't have a lot of passengers, they're trying their best to kind of keep the sidewalks, keep everything clear around here because, like they said, uh, it's still open for passengers. Now, I want to swing you around this way for just a second. All right, you guys, uh, most of the time when I meet you two on the morning show, it's because I'm out here at the airport doing snow coverage uh, for big storms like this. But I've got to say, this is the most dead and quiet I have ever seen Denver International Airport. There is literally nobody here, you guys. I'm the only one, aside from a couple of shuttle bus drivers who are still bravely making those rounds to and from some of the rental car agencies, some of the hotels in the area. But it's really kind of eerie. You know, we've been at the airport since yesterday. There are virtually no passengers around. Uh, It's really just staff members here at this point. We're trying to get a good gauge right now on how many people may have spent the night here at the airport. You know, a lot of times when I do these live shots, uh, you know, staying overnight at the airport, we have a lot of passengers who are sleeping on the floor. Unfortunately, people who had to, uh, you know, get stranded inside the airport. We didn't really see that or witness that here last night. Now, I talked with the airport officials last week. They said 
coming into this storm, one of the silver linings, I guess, if you could say, the pandemic has actually brought spring break travel down about 30%. So there are a lot fewer people who would have been here at the airport, whether we had a snowstorm or not. So now that we do have this storm, it really just brings that number down even further. Kirk and Megan. Ashley, we just have to stop meeting like this. It does seem like every time you're <laughs> hanging with us, you're out at the airport covering that snow. Uh, can you see Pena from where you are? Have they been clearing off Pena pretty well? I mean, obviously people this afternoon might try to be make that trek out to the airport. Yeah, that's a really good question. Let's swing back around this way. Okay, so we stayed at the uh, the Westin uh, that's attached here at the airport. We oh, stayed there cool. last night in our room. It actually overlooks Pena Boulevard uh, and that part kind of where the A-line comes in. Right. And this is sort of a, a, a good indicator. You can't see too far here, Kirk and Megan. Oh this is the fifth floor parking garage. And uh, you can't wow. really see past the edges of that parking garage. Even from our wow. 14th floor, we could hardly see past, uh, past the entrance of where that A-line comes in. But I will say... When we did have a little bit of clearing, we kind of had fun uh, trying to count how many snow plows we saw out on the roads. It's been a lot, you guys. It's usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 18 uh, when, uh, when we do see those snow plows uh, out on the roads. Unfortunately, though, right now, visibility a little too poor. Can't oh, see wow. them, but hey, we've got a snow plow coming through right here. Like there I said, wow, they're trying to keep things open snow. even though we don't have any passengers. Yeah, I'd be look curious, that, you guys. I'd hey, be curious we to can find out how many people are, are We can see pavement inside. for the first time. Yeah, there you go. I know. So there we did hey, ask the airport bonus. about that. We're hoping to get a little. Yeah, we're hoping to get a we're hoping to get a little better idea from the airport here soon uh, about if they had passengers who were unfortunately forced to spend the night. They've got kits and things yeah. ready to go for mm -hmm. those people, but you know, sort of a silver lining that a lot of these flights were canceled already coming into today. So the hope was, I just got a snowball to the eye, eye you guys. The hope is that people were able to either stay at a hotel right. an extra night or just stay at home. Wow, look at all that snow. <laughs> Ashley Michaels live for us out there at the airport where it is dumping right now. Our crews are out catching plenty of action this morning in this snowstorm and we are on it. Carly Cassidy, she's going to join us live next out of Genesee. Oh man, folks are getting stranded in this weather. We'll show you what happened here when we come back.
We're watching the snow totals for you all around the metro. We sure are. Fox 31 meteorologist Carly Cassidy live in Genesee this morning. The snow has been coming down, although it seems, Carly, like maybe it's lightened up a touch right now. Uh, yeah, still coming down pretty good. The wind does make a big difference, but actually here just back behind the car just moved on. You maybe saw during the tease those two cars. Well, one was stuck. The other helped the other get out. So you can even see here this two trucks. They were making their way up here. One only had two wheel drive, not four wheel drive, and it got stuck right there. Then also back and behind there as well. So right by the Buffalo heard overlook sign. So that's where this first truck did get stuck. The second one helped out. They were traveling. They got in here. I think it was Thursday or Friday. They said uh, from Florida, they decided to go to, of course, the mountains for spring break. They're headed to Breckenridge and at the airport, you know, car rental, they got the first truck and it only had two wheel drive. So some things that, and also this is all of Cody stuff. He actually helped them get out. This is what you do need if you are headed out in this, especially if you don't have a four wheel drive. So a shovel, then here's your tow rope. And this is actually what they did use to get the truck out. Then here you go, your tire chains, and then also some jumper cables. So this is all of Cody's stuff. And again, he did help to get these people out. I think we do a video of it now. So may be able to see that there where that truck was back behind and then uh, the bigger truck and I guess the four wheel drive truck. That's the one that did help. And then also uh, Jefferson County Sheriff. He was out here as well, helping to get them out too. And so it was a family coming together, had some kids as well. So they were and did get on their way, continued with their travels, but we kind of advise not to um, as they are headed to Breckenridge, but they still made it on their way. We told them to stop and get some supplies. So hopefully they do do that. And then also if you are headed out for today, you really do need to keep all of this gear with you as well. So this same type of scenario does not happen because they were here for about 45 minutes to an hour just trying to get out. Guys. Yeah. It, well, the thing is, too, when Cody, you know, he's helped people out before. Whenever he helps someone out, he makes them promise to only watch Fox 31. You can never watch <laughs> 9 or 7 or 4 or whatever else. They did take some pictures, us. you know, sign some autographs. So yeah, we got it all covered. Go. <laughs> oh, look at it out there. So much snow. Obviously, people getting stuck. You know, and this is a reminder, Megan, if you don't have to go out, just right. don't. I mean, yeah. I mean, seeing those stories, I think that would... If anyone was on the fence, I think they'd be sitting tight, bundled up at home. Yeah. You definitely don't want to take a, yeah. a chance there. Carly, thank you. And by the way, tell them all thank you for helping um, <laughs> great ambassadors of Fox but, 31, helping the stranded drivers. But Cody does that as he's pulling you out because he can also back up and you can go back. Right. <laughs> so he's kind of got leverage. All right. So here's the uh, the snow reports, the latest numbers. DIA closing in on a foot. Looks like they're going to end up with somewhere between 15 and 20 inches by the time all is said and done. West Fort Collins, 14. Wellington, 14. Longmont, 10. Genesee uh, approaching a foot. Greeley's at eight. Downtown, we've got half a foot. Lakewood's out there adding up their totals. Castle Rock, there's Georgetown at 14. Continues to snow in all these locations. So these are not final numbers by any stretch of the imagination. Some of the things I'm looking at, the heavy snow is now until noon, and there is a lot of melting and compaction going on. So if you don't measure right away, like the snowpack, zzz, it goes down like you're just compressing. It just melts. So snow tapers off late tonight into tomorrow morning. You know, all night we ran into this problem of wind direction. It was not a good wind. It was a dry wind for Denver. Now it's much better. Easterly wind piling in the snow to Denver and the front range. As the storm goes on, it's going to turn more towards the northeast, and that will really start to benefit areas on the south sides of town. So you may end up with snow later in the storm. Uh, and you may even see it building in right now. Here's our future radar. We're in the deep blue all the way through the morning into the lunch hour. We're still in it. Then in the afternoon, things start to back away a little bit. The storm will begin to move away. Snow tapers tonight into tomorrow morning. In fact, with a northwest wind, see how it backs around? That'll be like a, a switch that you flip, and that will start to really dry the air out. So additional snow between now and the end of the storm, potentially another 6 to 12 inches. I'll probably knock that down to 4 to 8, starting at about the 8 a.m. hour, because we continue to accumulate snow. And another foot or two up in the foothills. You can see the other amounts on the way. We'll zoom in, potentially these additional kinds of snow amounts out there. But again, probably knock these down once we get to the 8 a.m. hour as those accumulations continue. And then tomorrow we dry out in the 30s, lingering snow showers on Tuesday and Wednesday, much 
much warmer for next weekend. Megan, Kirk, let's go back to you. Thank you, Chris. Our crews have been out all morning long and are not going anywhere. We are staying live through 1 o'clock this afternoon here on Fox. When it comes to big storm coverage, big weather coverage here on Fox, we're on it. Welcome back. Pinpoint weather alert day 753. Uh, I set up a couple snow stakes in my backyard. This is my beer can snow stake. Oh my goodness. And, uh, you know, Only it's you. It's Colorado. This is, this is how we measure snow in That's Colorado. Right. So far we're looking at about one, a little bit more than one can of beer high down here in the Castle Rock area. Uh, I measured it. We're at about six or seven inches here and you can see the snow is falling. The flakes are flying right now, Megan. And it's definitely slick out there no matter where you're waking up with us. We've got Lisa D'Souza joining us live with a look at the conditions. Lisa, where are you and how's it been going out there so far this morning? Good morning, Megan. Well, we are on I-25 southbound right now. Unfortunately, things have not improved all that much since we last checked in with you. Take a look at the roads right now. You can see uh, still looking at no lane visibility at this point. As Kirk mentioned, we're in the Castle Rock area as well. Those flakes just continue to fall. But looking ahead, you know, I was hoping the daylight might help things out as far as visibility goes. Certainly not the case. You can see poor visibility on the roads, poor visibility just looking, you know, a half a mile, a mile ahead head up the roads. Now, fortunately, it's a Sunday, so there's really not that many cars on the roads. It seems like a lot of people are really taking our advice and making sure that they're hunkering down during this weather, which is definitely ideal. Earlier this morning, we saw several slide offs. We also saw one accident of someone trying to pass us and lost control of their vehicle. Fortunately, they were OK, but it's just another reminder to make sure that you are not 
underestimating what you're looking at on the roads because certainly you do have that potential to easily lose traction when we're talking about conditions like this where it's tough to see the lanes, the road in front of you, and then you've got this crunchy snow underneath that can make it easy to lose traction. Meantime, if you are driving in this area, if you have to get out there, keep in mind right now here on I-25 in the southbound lanes, there is a passenger traction law in effect. You've got to have those snow rated tires or chains on your tires if you're driving from about 163 exit 163 the monument hill area to exit 193 about lone tree so keep that in mind as you're headed out this morning i will say the few cars we've seen on the roads they do seem at this point to make sure that they're taking it slow taking their time out there so that's encouraging to see we've also seen a few cars that have uh, made the mistake of not fully wiping off their windshields before they get out on the road so make sure you're cleaning you know not just your front windshield clean the back clear off all those all those windows because you need as much visibility as you can get in conditions like this oh man and and, and do you are you seeing people I, you talked about the person trying to pass you that's a bonehead Ooh, yeah. decision are you seeing most people out there who are on the road being safe going slow taking their time Fortunately, that is the good thing. Most people that we're seeing out on the roads are going slow. I mean, really, we're talking about like a snail's oh, pace. You can see there's really nobody out on the roads at this point. But yeah, fortunately, everyone we're seeing is going fairly slow at this point. You can see the snow just blowing across the highway there. We've also seen a lot of snow plows here within about the past hour or so. So that is encouraging as well. I'm just curious, uh, how fast are you able to go in these conditions? Uh, right now, I believe we're going, the speed limit's 65. We're going a little bit under 40. Wow. So really making sure that we're taking our time as well. Yeah, it's just so important in conditions like this. You know, the slower, the safer, in my opinion. Absolutely. Can't All right, see the thank you, there. Lisa. The, uh, everyone would agree with you. The slower, the safer. Colorado's largest news team working for you right now. We're going to be live through 1 o'clock here on Fox 31. Our coverage will continue throughout the day on our new streaming service, Fox 31 Now, over on KDVR.com and the Fox 31 News app.